everybody. How are you doing today? Uh, morning for some of you, afternoon for some of you, evening and tomorrow for some of you. But anyway, I uh, hope you take advantage of this day. It is the Lord's Day. I mean, it's not technically Sunday, the Lord's Day, but every day the Lord has made is the Lord's Day, and it belongs to Him. And we belong to Him. So uh, do something for God today. I mean, be, be active. Be, be useful for God. I mean, don't just sit there like a bump on a log, uh, like a pew sitter. I mean, get busy. Do something for God today. And share the message of God with others. All right, the title of the lesson today is called St Steps That Lead to Destruction. And we're going to base this on Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 10 through 16. And we're going to note several things about Jeremiah's day. See, the preacher says there's nothing new under the sun, Ecclesiastes 1, 9. And that which has been will be, and that which will be has been done. So there is nothing new under the sun. And so logical reasoning suggests that when we, what we are going through in our day and age has already taken place. And the preacher was right. Yes, it comes from the word of God, so yes, it is right. See, Jeremiah had been called at a very critical time in the history of Judah. I mean, Israel had already uh, been carried off. I mean, the northern kingdom, uh, they carried away in the days of Isaiah. And so this happened 700 years before Christ. Now, here we are about 500 years, 580 years before Christ, and Jeremiah is on the scene. And... Uh, Jer they had warned Israel repeatedly of their of her sins, and yet she would not heed or take listening to these things, would not correct their steps or their path. So they followed in the steps of destruction. And the times of Jeremiah were very much like our times that we live in. And when I go through it and point these things out, yep, yep, that's what you're going to say. That's exactly what's going on. See, it was a period of wealth and prosperity, and yet they were lacking in and very poor in spirituality and godliness. I mean, in Jeremiah, we find a picture of our hellish society as we follow the five steps of destruction outlined uh, by this prophet. See, the first, first point we want to make out from verse 10 is that the word of the Lord was a reproach. I mean, they couldn't stand God's word. Now, what happens when we start quoting the Bible? They start screaming its hate speech. And so we, we find this, you know, in chapter 8 of Jeremiah, verse 9, we see he says, The wise men are ashamed, they are dismayed and taken. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord, and what wisdom is in them? So, I mean, that was stated as a question. What, what kind of wisdom when people reject the words of God? And we, we ask that same question today. When people reject the words of God, where is the wisdom in that? Well, there is none. It's foolishness. And so they were, not, they were a people who did not obey the voice of the Lord. And, and as a result, they didn't want to rec receive correction from God. And so it is no wonder they went backward and not forward. And so that, that's, what, um, that's what we're dealing with. I mean, that, that's the way it is. Now, the next point is, it says everyone was given to covetousness. Now, what is covetousness? Yeah, that, that's, that's a form of idolatry. In other words, I want something so much, it doesn't matter what it takes to get it. I mean, that, that's the idea. If, if I have to steal it to get it, I will do that. If I have to st cheat somebody out of it, I, I will do that. And so everybody was greedy. And that, that was their problem. And Jeremiah 6.13 says, Everyone was given to covetousness. And when he says everyone, you know, that kind of covers a lot of people. And we, we could probably say most people still have this problem. There's a few that have learned not to be covetous, uh, but that'd be very few. And we know that, just like there's very few who are going to be faithful to God. And so they were given over to this covetousness. 
And Isaiah would describe the people as greedy dogs which can never have enough. Isaiah 56 and verse 11. And we must realize that covetousness is idolatry. You know, Colossians 3, 5. And we must beware of it. We're, we're told to beware of covetousness. And we also know that salvation cannot be purchased with silver or gold. I mean, I mean, this is the gift of God. You know, Zephaniah 118 tells us that. And nor is Jehovah impressed with treasures we accumulate here on earth. Yeah, we can get we can get treasures here on earth. We can build them up. We can build big fancy houses. God is not impressed by that because let's face it, God owns everything. He has it all. And he just allows us to use some of these things. And we need to pray for the wisdom to use these things wisely and properly. And so we, we, we are told by Jesus we must lay up treasure in heaven. And we do that by walking contentedly here in our daily walk. We have to learn to be content. If you're not content, then you're covetous. And, and you're going to covet things. You, you want more and more and more. <clears throat> and once again, like Isaiah said, you'll be kind of put in that class with the greedy dogs who never have enough. We need to be able to appreciate what we do have, what little we have. Then the next step is they said, peace, peace, when there is no peace. See, Jeremiah 6, 14. They were a people who did not recognize the problems that surrounded them. They were so wrapped up in their own little world and everybody was telling them everything's okay. Don't worry about it. Nothing to see here. And many today fail to recognize the problems that the church faces. And really, if the church is facing problems, then the individual members are facing problems. And so the Bible speaks of false teachers in every time frame. You know, Peter said, there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who shall privately or privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring destruction upon themselves. You know, that's Second Peter 2, 1. And so, we, we live in a time of blessing. We re realize that, at least in this country. We must also realize that we must beware. We have to pay attention. We have to take the warnings. We need to take heed. And so many times people say, well, don't worry about that. You don't, we don't have anything to worry about. Nothing bad is going to happen. And then you look at the condition of our country, think bad things are happening all the time, but people keep their heads in the sand and, and they don't see it. They don't recognize it. And crime is running rampant and they just kind of ignore it. So, I mean, they, they, there's definitely a problem there. And they say, nothing to see here. No problem. Don't worry about it. We've taken care of things, just like the government. Oh, yeah, we're taking care of things. And the whole time, they're still taken away from us. The last, another point, another step is the fact that they could not blush. In Jeremiah 6.15, they've forgotten how to blush. See, Zephaniah said, the unjust knoweth no shame. See, when people are so wicked that they have no shame, and we see that in the streets of our, our nation. I mean, people get out there, they do all sorts of immodesty. There's no shame in them. They get out and do uh, sexual acts upon others with no shame. They, they steal things, they hurt things, they hurt people, they, they take lives. There's no shame in any of that. And so the fine art of blushing is being lost. And, and it really is. And it's being lost at an early age. We should be teaching our children to respect their bodies and not share their bodies with others. But they're out there exposing their bodies uh, at a very young age. And then, yes, teen pregnancy and even preteen pregnancy is taking place in our world today. Immodesty is becoming the sign of the times. I mean... You can't really get some of these streaming services uh, like uh, all this other stuff because they, they have foul language, they have uh, skin showing and things like that. So you have to be very careful what you watch on the television. 
and even on the regular stations they're, they're trying to jump in there and throw something in there that a few years ago people would not have appreciated and yet they're doing that more and more so immodesty is becoming the sign of the times and it doesn't seem to be any shame at all and so that results in wild rebellious children and sin going unopposed and it should be a shame to any people you know proverbs says sin is a reproach upon anybody righteousness exalteth a nation and and yet the order of the day for many is let's do something wicked i mean so we, we think back to the days of noah when god said their their every thought is evil continuously and let's face it what they're showing us in this world today and, and what they're trying to get us to get involved in is evil evil continuously so we need to get back to the purity of god's standard and that's why we need to teach god's standard and not man's standards because man is always changing god does not change malachi 3 6 tells us that and then of course the the ultimate from jeremiah 6 16 is they refuse to walk in the old paths i mean let, let's look at this there are those who are claiming clamoring for change and for that which is new and however we must realize that the bible says now what it said in the beginning in the area of new testament christianity we must realize that the church and the message are more than 1900 years old and we need to seek those old paths of god's word and god's word does not change and that's what we are told and so the standard for righteousness is what took place in the first century is still the standard of righteousness for the 21st century. I mean, so, I mean, it's 1900 years old now and possibly right at 2000 years old. And we need to seek these old paths of God's word. And you see that nothing really changes. I mean, we, we can learn great lessons from the Old Testament if we will. And let's just pray that we keep those things in mind as we study our Bibles much, much more. You want to find out what's going to happen next in our society? Just read Isaiah and Jeremiah. You're going to see what's coming. And we have people who get out there trying to sound the warnings that bad things are going to happen. And others saying, oh, don't listen to them. They know what they're talking about listen to us and we, everything's going to be fine and the problem is those who are saying everything's going to be fine are the very ones who are corrupting and destroying our nation and so we, we, we see that and, and so nothing really changes and we just need to avoid the steps that lead to destruction and where does that start well it starts with me I have to make sure that I do not get involved in these steps. I've got to keep my path pure. I've got to learn what God wants. I've got to walk in the light as he is in the light. I've got to conduct myself in a manner worthy of the calling by which I've been called. And so it, it's really dependent upon each and every one of us to avoid these steps that lead to destruction. But the, sometimes people try and do this in subtle steps like the word of the, the Bible, quoting the Bible. I mean, when people start quoting the Bible today, they're called fundamentalist. They're called uh, legalist uh, and, and modern day Pharisees. And that's just because here's what the Bible says. Here's what we should be doing. And the word of God is a reproach to these people. And yes, they're greedy. A lot of people are greedy. Most people are greedy. And we have to recognize that. They said nothing to worry about. Everything's going to be fine. And yeah, wh what do they tell us in the denominations? Uh, it doesn't matter how you live. God's going to accept you anyway. Don't worry about it. You don't have to change your life just to be pleasing to God. Just do whatever feels good. I mean, that's what they say. And yes, shame is gone. There is no shame. And, of course, refusing to walk in the paths that God has established. That's what he said there in Jeremiah, where the good way is. And, and, uh, and you'll not stumble from that. And yet the people said, we will not do it. And that's our problem we face in our world today. People refuse to listen to God.
So where, what does that bring us? That brings us down, okay, since the world's not going to listen to me and since the world's not going to straighten up, I've got to make sure I am right with God. So that, that's where we go from here. We've got to concentrate on ourselves. Concentrate upon ourselves and encouraging our brethren to do the same thing. Because in many churches of our land, a lot of these problems are evident. I mean, they're there. And people just afraid to say anything. And we cannot do that. We need to be sounding the warning just like Jeremiah did, like Isaiah did, and the other prophets. We've got to warn people what happens. We've got to warn people to take heed lest they fall, as Paul told the Corinthians. And we must always take heed that we don't fall into the sins that, that so easily beset us. The Hebrew writer tells us that. So think about those things. That, that's going to be our lesson for today. And uh, consider these thoughts. And uh, Lord willing, be back again tomorrow with another lesson. Bye-bye for now.